Maya. Yeah. I know you should be panting because I'm yeah. literally panting, bro. Bro. This right here, my guy, this is the view. Like, I mean, oh literally, you can see God. the whole Lagos Island. We don't even need to hire a chopper, bro. Where? And this project is done by an African. Are you kidding That is me? the most interesting part, bro. An African? An African. What's up, brother? Nice to see Good you, to see sir. You. You're doing an amazing work over here. Thank you, my brother. I just feel like living here already. Thank you, my brother. I tell you. Thank you so much for introducing him to me, man. Awesome, my and man. He has to answer all my questions. You definitely have. Hello, guys. Sesso Global is a one stop shop for all property transactions. We've got the biggest partnerships with the biggest law firms, brokers, and developers all over Nigeria. So, if you're looking to invest in Nigeria, buying real estate, reach out to Sesso. Click the link below. Hello, my name is Juliet. I work for Sesso Global. And Cecil Global Marketplace is actually a one-stop shop for all property transactions. We help buyers assess very good properties and give them professional services. It's actually, we help you with the experience. And if you're a property developer, you want to target the diaspora market, I think you should contact Cecil Global. Good to see you. You too. I mean, I just want to know who you are. My name is Wadamaya from Ghana, but hey, what? is the idea behind this building because it's hard to get here but the view is worth it first of all what do you actually have to introduce yourself because everybody knows you you have ah. so many fans you know around the world i think my mom even called me i think she even said how fast she wants to come meet you so after we leave here we'll, we'll go to the village we'll come and hang out with her okay how's that how's that for a plan no, that would be fantastic cool it's a pleasure to meet you my Same name is here. my name is joe orgy um i'm one of the two partners of brookstone Hmm. Um, uh, one of the two people who were crazy enough um, to try to do something like this um, and we're part of a small company and we're very proud to be um, associated with that company and all the people in that company who have worked very hard to create what is our fourth project which is the Overlook Condominiums. What was the first ever project? The first ever project, we started very small, we had four bedroom townhouses in El Agushi, literally a couple units that we started about five years ago. We finished those, went to a uh, mixed-use commercial hmm. uh, flex office industrial project um, in uh, Shangote Do by Lagos Business School. Third project, which is the largest project. Um, we were development managers on a very large development called Landmark Village. Oh, okay. And I'm going to take you there to meet the owner, by oh. the way, we talked about that, um, who is also uh, my former boss. Um, and, um, and then, so we completed the first couple of phases of that. And then this is our fourth endeavor, the Overlook. Bro, I want to say you're amazing, but you said it five years ago. Yep, almost where, six now, almost, almost six, now. six years now. Yep. Six years ago, where yep. were you? Six years ago, we launched the business and we were, you know, doing small, small things. Just literally doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, and just to try to build up the business, try to build up the portfolio, try to build up revenue, mm. try to build up a name. Mm. So um, when it just looked like things were taking off, um, I, I went, to, uh, went to my former boss, um, <laughs> Paul. And by the way, you know, uh, you know um, I went to him and I said, listen, uh, you know, uh, Atareto and I are you know, think about starting this firm and, you know, we think we're at the right place to do it now. And, you know, and um, we'd like to, to launch it. And he gave us his, his green light. He gave us his backing, his support. Paul is actually the chairman of Brookstone. That tells you the type of relationship we've, uh, we've, we have. So that's one side of the story. Are you over here? Oh, okay. Ha! Paul! Oh. Ha! What's up, my big brother? How are you? How are you? He's telling me that his story won't be complete if I don't meet Paul. And neither will my story be complete. Uh, and certainly this story won't be complete if, if Joe was not here. <laughs> Whoa. Hey man. Absolutely. What, what can you tell me about Joe? Teamwork makes a dream work. Uh, uh. Well, Joe is ground zero. So, I, you know, I remember, gosh, Joe, how long was this? Nine, eight, eight, seven, nine, seven, years seven years ago. ago. Around, when you, no, it was longer than that. When you came to Landmark. 2013. Oh, no, yeah. That was like eight, nine. That was 20. 2012. 2012. So exactly. Nine years ago, Joe walks into Landmark, says, look, he wants an internship. So he comes in with his American accent, comes in with a, a whole wealth of And I look him in the eyes and I say, he wants an internship. So, you know, we pay him an intern salary and he gets to work. <laughs> right? Gets to nothing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. how, how much was the internship salary? It was like 25,000. He spent it, he probably spent it before he got into the office. <laughs> so, 
The general counsel says it was an internship, but you know, there's just something about, about, about this young man. And so when he came in and started working, he had ideas. We're on the same wavelength. Huh? And I thought to myself, you know what? We're going to build a proper business here, and Joe is going to be a fundamental part of it. And you know, wow. nine years later, that was it. So you, you gave us a good five years. Yeah. All this stuff was on Joe's drawing board. Huh? Um, so that's a good five years. So um, if, if there were three words I would use for Joe, mm. I'd say he comes with passion, bundles of passion, <laughs> bundles of passion, right? Pursuit of excellence. You know, excellence is his key word. You know? Whatever he does, he chooses to do well. Yeah? The last thing is endurance. You know what they say? Uh, they say, the, you know, one of the major virtues of, war, of, a, of a soldier is not courage, it's endurance. It's the ability to stay the course. Yeah? And Joe was that. So those three things, you know, passion, excellence, and endurance, that combination is success. I mean, it's a journey, but we're, we're getting there. Huh? How, how, we're getting there. How did, we're getting you feel, there. how did you feel when Joe wanted to leave? Delighted and and delighted for the right reasons eh? because um, you know You always say that if you want to be successful make sure people around you are successful, right? And I knew that Joe will go on and do something that would, that's that will, will basically say more about us than anything else than we can say about ourselves So when Joe said he wanted to leave, you know, I supported it and, and Joe will tell you I sit on his board anyway, so so, chairman, no, <laughs> so so Joe hasn't actually left <laughs> we're, we're still in the same industry. We're more or less still the same company, and um, and Joe's still the same guy. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, the truth is, the Brookstone story is a landmark story, and I'm fortunate the landmark story is part of the Brookstone story. And you see this, you see, you see this landmark in this Brookstone right here. There's a reason why this is my big uncle right here. So then I I also went to my wife. And I told her, I said, listen, babe, you know, 18, I want to fully launch right now, you know, I want to do this thing, you know, um, full time, everything, you know, quit and every time, full thing. And she looked at me and she said, listen, are you an idiot? <laughs> she said, listen, said, are you okay? She said, listen, we have, a, you know, we're planning for a family. How are we going to feed ourselves? You know, this and that, how are we going to do this? You know, you know, this and that. And I said, baby, just trust me. I know what I'm doing, you know. You know, I have this innate ability to try to plan this. Say, plan, plan what? What are you talking about? So, <laughs> so my wife, she thought I was, she thought I was, I was, I was insane. Um, so, you know, I, I often bring up that story to her when I'm tr trying to, thinking about something. And, and we're, with this, she's a bit doubtful. She's, um, she's, a, she's a bit more cautious in her, in her um, scrutiny of me. But um, I'm really glad that we took that, that shot. Honestly, we, we knew, we knew, um, we, we knew 100%. Uh, we had no doubt that we were gonna be successful because wow. we, just, we just brought together kind of our knowledge. We brought together our experience, um, local, international. Um, and we just, we were, we, were, we were ambitious and stupid enough that we can build something great. So the major keyword here is risk. Yes, um, you got to listen, you got to take risks to get reward. You grew up in Nigeria? I was born here. I was born in Port Orchard. Um, okay. We left when we were all quite young. We actually left in 1989. Um, my entire family, right? So we went to, moved to the US, moved to Maryland. Um, and my entire family, right? So there's, there's, um, there's four of us and my, my two parents. Um, and um, so we, yeah, so we, we left. I was eight years old at the time we left. Mm. Um, and uh, so my, I think my parents actually just saw what was happening in the country and they just thought things were, um, were, uh, were coming uh, de debilitating a bit. So they, they took a chance, again, took a risk, and they were very fortunate. We, we were very fortunate because we got a lottery. We won, I think my parents applied and won the lottery and then we left to the, uh, to the US. So I schooled uh, and worked, I lived and worked there for about 24 years. Um, interestingly enough, I'm the only one of my siblings who have come back now. Only uh, one. Only one, yeah. <laughs> um, my brothers are still there. Um, so you talk about risk, right? So yeah. two things, right? So my, my, my younger brother, my immediate younger brother is actually a professional boxer. So uh, he was ranked, I think, around number 50 in the world at some point. So it was very good. And he worked, gosh, it was in the gym every day for about five years to get to where he got to, or six years to get to where he got to. Um, and so he was, you know, almost at the peak of his, um, kind of his, his class, so his boxing. And my sister, um, you may or may not know, um, uh, well, a lot of people know her. She's, um, she's a very talented actress named Yvonne. And um, she's very famous. She's, she's arguably one of the most famous uh, 
uh, black actresses right now um, around the world. And she had a massive special uh, on HBO, and she's um, she's also shooting her fourth season right she's now, in Insecure, yeah. for wow. HBO. So that's her sister. Yeah, that's what I said. So um, so she so it's cool to kind of talk about those accomplishments for you know whether it's my brother, whether it's my sister, whether it's us, but we've all taken risks. She worked for about 10 years um, making next to nothing and hustling to try from one audition to another, mm. trying to get one gig to another. And literally, and she, you know, when she was literally at her lowest, when she wanted to quit, when she thought that God was betraying her, um, it finally just clicked. And she, she um, booked Insecure um and she's a massive brand the rest is history uh you know very and you know so my brother had a very similar story and um for us it was also similar right because when uh we took a risk when we started this project mm. um we tried to conceptualize something that would be different from everything else right because there are a lot of apartment buildings developments in lagos but we said what's different um what's going to spark an interest what's going to create um demand so we looked around at what we noticed, because as I said, I worked with uh, institutional developers in, in, in the U.S. for, uh, for many years. And um, I, I, I knew what they built uh, back in the U.S. And I also lived there for a long time. And I lived in these U.S. style apartments uh, with other Nigerians, and they liked those apartments. Mm -hmm. um, but you didn't, um, and many of those Nigerians came back here and, uh, to, to Lagos and to Nigeria to live. But you didn't have a representation of those kind of apartments here in mm. Nigeria. Yeah. So we said, listen, let's, we took a chance to say, let's, let's do condos, okay. uh, which are American style uh, apartments here in Nigeria. Right. And, and Maya, guess what? Everybody told us we're idiots. They said, they said it wasn't going to work. They said, listen, is, it, is this America? Is this America? Is this, this is Nigeria? Is, it, is, this, is, this, is it Asia? They said, listen, if you want to build American condos, go back to America. It's not going to work. So we said, um, yeah, we hear you, thank you, you know, Mr. Ma'am or Madame, but we think differently. So we rolled the dice, we took a chance, um, and now, you know, we'll be completed in a, in hope in a couple months, and we have five units left out of out of thirty. So wow. commercially, it's a success. I, I just want to know, yeah, let, let me understand in the first place why you decided to leave America and return to Nigeria because you're telling me that you had only one of your four siblings that returned. Yeah. Why would you do that? Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I mean, okay. I think it starts with my parents. You know, my mom worked incredibly hard. She worked very hard to get the way she is. Yeah. My dad is a, is a really um, kind of traditional business person. So they, we, growing up, we learned a lot from them. So as a young man, seeing my dad, you know, get up in the morning, grab his briefcase, go out to work, trying to get uh, jobs, trying to get deals, trying to get contracts, see my mom work. And my mom was a nurse, so yeah. Yeah, they can work, you know, 24 hours in a hospital um, or work in different hospitals. Um, so, I, you know, so seeing, growing up in that uh, kind of environment, uh, I said to myself, listen, for us, for all of us, um, work ethic was something that was uh, embedded in us. Mm -hmm. And honestly, uh, there are many things in life that you cannot control. One of the things in life that you can control is your work ethic. So for me, um, whether successful or, or a failure, one thing that is within my power is my work ethic. So I knew that I can work, I knew that I could work hard. So I wanted to take more risks to earn more. So coming out of school, um, you know, I had that same mentality and I didn't want to kind of, I didn't want to do the same thing as everyone else, the same nine to five. I wanted to take more risks to get more, more rewards. So I, I worked for um, uh, an investment sales uh, company, a real estate investment sales company in, in DC. And, um, and believe it or not, so I worked there for six years and uh, guess how much in salary I, I earned in that time? That would be tough to guess, man. <laughs> because that was America. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, no, I, I, I'll help you out. So over a six year period, mm. I earned zero dollars in salary. Why? Because the company didn't pay salary. So it was a 100% commission fee-based business 
and you, you ate what you killed, so to speak. So if you're very good and you worked very hard, you ate a lot. Mm. If you're bad, you were, you, were, you were broke, you didn't make anything. And um, I remember starting, and it was difficult, you know, just like when you start any business, yeah. it's, it's very difficult. And um, so I remember I, I, haven't, I didn't close any transactions. So my, I, I remember I was down to my last $12 in my Bank of America bank account. I remember this thing like it was yesterday. I was in, I was, so at this point I was still living uh, at home in my parents' house. So I was in my room that I grew up in. Uh, in Maryland, and I, the lights were off, everyone was downstairs, I remember, I was just on my sofa, I was just cuddled like a baby, like my knees were around my chest, I was holding my legs, and I had, you know what I mean, I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, um, I didn't ask my parents for money, so they had no idea I was in this mm -hmm. shape, they saw me going to work, and, come, and going and coming every day, so, you know what I mean, they asked me how's everything going, I said it's fine, um, but you know what I mean, I was about to be penniless. Um, and, but I never gave up, I never quit, oh. I never... Um, you know, asked, um, asked my parents for help, except for the help they were, they were already giving me, which is living in their own houses. Um, so I just kept at it. And one thing led to another, and I, crazed this, I closed this crazy deal with, it was, I, did, I structured this very interesting transaction where I, I, I closed the transaction. So I held the fee on the transaction, but I also held equity stakes on the entry and the exit of this transaction. It was a kind of a, like a multi-party, uh, um, uh, multi-trans uh, uh, fee structure for me and I did really well and and boom that's how the whole thing started and that was probably about 2005-ish thereabouts mm -hmm. and uh, it, that's when you moved to Nigeria no so so I, I so I, I worked in that job to, uh, for about six years or so I went to Georgetown for business school um, and but between uh, uh, working and business school, there was the financial crisis. And we all know about the financial crisis. And if you're working in real estate in the US in a financial crisis, you witnessed and you experienced incredible highs and tremendous lows. So I experienced tremendous highs and incredible lows. Um, you know, I went from earning a lot of cash to losing everything um literally um so and uh, and that was around 2008 because the crash the things started changing in seven and by eight 2008 I, again i was penniless mm. so i said to myself i said to myself this real estate thing is it, too hard this, <laughs> it's too difficult you know and i i was trying to figure out what i want to do next mm. um and i got i gotta tell you this i give my parents a lot of credit because you know, we moved to the U.S. when we were very long, mm. but like solid Nigerian parents, they never let us forget where we were from. And they always told us, listen, you're Nigerian. And they, they beat that into our heads and they embedded that in our heads. And, they did it, and I give them a lot of credit for that. With kind of that um, sense of home in, 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 in my background, um, I was researching and trying to figure out what it is I want to do. And every time I read about Nigeria, literally my heart, my heart would skip a beat. You know, and that signaled to me, um, as it should to everyone, that there's a, there's a, there's a keen interest there. Um, so I was doing some research and I was really fortunate because um, a family friend um, was a higher up at Fidelity. So I got an internship there. This was before I started my MBA. So I came, did a pre-MBA internship, really liked it. First time I worked in Nigeria, so I learned a bit. And when I did that, I said to myself, you know, that's when it, that's when it, it hit me. I said, Nigeria is a developing country. So I have a chance to do development in a developing country. So I would basically have a chance to, you know, kind of ride the wave with Nigeria as it goes up. So, um, so, I, I, so again, I, I took that decision. I took that decision. Listen, I want to come back and I want to work in, um, in Nigeria. So then finished my first year MBA, got an internship at Landmark, uh, worked there. It was really cool. Worked on some pretty cool projects. Um, you know, met Paul, uh, met uh, Deborah. I worked with a bunch of people. They had a great experience. Um, uh, they were crazy enough to want me back. I was crazy enough to want to come back. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So they brought me back after my MBA. That was 2013. Um, and um, and yeah. So so back again to the risk thing, right? Because 
the truth of the matter is that America was kind of already, um, it was already kind of known what would happen there. Um, I knew the kind of income I would earn. Um, I knew it's a structured environment, so I knew you know, how things worked. Um, in Nigeria, I didn't have as many friends, didn't have as many contacts, didn't know as much about the country. Mm. I took a massive pay cut, but I took a massive pay cut to come back to uh, Nigeria. But I said I did it for really one, one rationale. I said, I'll take a few steps back and I believe that over a five-year timeline, I would have leapfrogged where I would have been in, in America. So you basically, again, taking risk to take a return. You're living in Nigeria right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you had the chance to change one thing in Nigeria, what would it be? Uh, good question. Um, so like it, it wouldn't be one thing, it'd be three things, and it's the three E's that I call it. Uh, it'd be um, empowerment, entitlement, and um, an education and I think it was Clinton I'm not sure who said that if you want to change Africa in, in the developing world um, you give them education because I think that if we're more educated people um, I, I just think we, we'd um, I think we'd be more empowered to do to make some changes right mm. so to go to empowerment um, so the two go hand in hand and um, I think that as an empowered people, because a lot, a lot of folks complain a lot, you know, about Nigeria. I, I do, um, guilty as charged. That, you know, you probably complain yeah. a lot about Nigeria as well. You're not even Nigerian, you know what I mean? Um, we need lights. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we need a few things, you know, but, uh, but, but then empowered people don't just kind of sit down and complain about it. They get up and, and they, 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 they do something about it. Um, and. And frankly, I, I'm, I'm actually very proud that actually, I think that's what we as a people have been doing you know, over the last year and you know, taking, um, taking things into our own hands, so to speak, um, and understanding that, that one individual can make um, a, a significant and positive difference. And the third thing is, um, is entitlement. I th uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of folks here feel that, um, uh, that it's their right to have certain things. Uh, and, you know, I tell my folks all the time that, um, um, you know, things aren't given to you, they're earned. Um, and I tell them, that, listen, you know, uh, you know, nothing is given to us as a firm. And that Brookstone earns this money the old fashioned way, we earn it. Um, um, so I say that, listen, don't, don't be, um, uh, don't, don't, don't think that you won't get your fear due. And I say, I tell them, don't worry about politics in the office or anywhere. I say, just, just um, showcase your talent. Because the truth is that you, you, know, you can't deny talent. So if you're good, it'll be recognized. Whether your current place or somewhere else, you know, it'll, it'll be recognized. I do you think there are opportunities in Nigeria? Yeah, I mean, um, I think 100%. Because, again, because it is a developing country. Um, there are opportunities for development across many different sectors. Are the challenges that you faced in Nigeria or something <laughs> when you go here? Because you said it's not going to be easy, there are difficulties. What are the kind of challenges that you face when you go here? Um, how much time in your show do you have? Because, <laughs> <laughs> because we could talk about this from uh, now no, to I mean, like, come. Give me a major challenge that you face when you go back because people need to know. I mean, despite the fact that there are opportunities, there should be challenges. Is that a major challenge? <laughs> when you're laughing, it seems that you have so much challenges than the opportunities. Yeah, so, so listen, um, as they say, uh, TIA, this is, this is Africa, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this, you know, so, so things, it, it's, um, things aren't as efficient as they are in the developed world. Right, things aren't as organized. Um, things don't always work. Mm. Um, th uh, things are relatively opaque. Um, there's oftentimes less discipline and there's just less structure. How much time when you're sure to have? We, we can complain from now the kingdom come, but or you can look at it from a slightly different perspective and say to yourself, listen, um, based on these problems, where are the opportunities, mm. where are the gaps, and how can I create a solution to be able to, um, to, 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 to plug those gaps for customers uh, or, or, or whoever. And frankly, so that's how Brookstone was born, actually. 
because we saw a big gap, massive gap in the market with regards to quality. Um, um, there's, just, there's just really poor quality uh, real estate being produced here. Yeah. And like I said, you know, we were, we were foolish enough and ambitious enough to think that we could, we could make a difference in that regard. But that's actually one of our three USPs. Um, and that's what customers have come to, to appreciate, which is quality, trust, and delivery. Um, and, and those simple things are what we focus on. And, and, and we literally, um, we install those things in all of our projects. We live and breathe those things in all of our projects. And so when people come to our projects, they're, they're, they're blown away and they actually, they ask us, they say that we're overdoing it. But to us, you know, uh, we feel that actually, the customers actually deserve that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the market deserves it. So we're actually very proud of, of those remarks. I mean, you said it's remaining five units. Yes, and that's correct. Um, how can we buy that five units if we want to support you? Where do we find the link to buy those five units? A um, couple places. First, you can go to our website, uh, brookstone-property.com. Um, you can also check out our partner, Sessor Global, okay. um, as well. They have uh, uh, our listings and a bunch of other listings. Mm. Um, they're very, we're very happy and proud to, to be partnering with them. Um, and thirdly, you can also go to uh, Woody Maya's website. You, know, you can check us out. You know? <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. <laughs>